Reconciliation of Book and Taxable Income Problem 3. Avocado Inc. has financial accounting book income of $1,200,000. Book income includes $380,000 of income tax expense, $10,000 of municipal bond interest income, and $150,000 of business meals expense. Based only on these items, compute Avocado's taxable income. We're determining the taxable income and we're given the accounting, financial accounting book income amount. The idea here is that it's a reconciliation of book and taxable income. Financial accounting income or book income, also known as gap income versus taxable income. The idea is different rules. There's different rules that apply, but there's also a lot of similarities. And if we're given book income and we need to reconcile to get taxable income, which is very important in the tax process, what we do is first step, we start by getting our book income number, which is $120,000. I'm sorry, $1,200,000, $1,200,000. So right there, boom, we get our book income, book income amount as our starting point to get taxable income. And that is $1.2 million, $1.2 million. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go through, because remember, there's certain rules that for tax purposes are different than book purposes and the information we're given because it's saying based only on these items, calculate taxable income. We're just going to go through and adjust for the additional information given to us. Now, remember that there's different, different differences. There's temporary differences and permanent differences. When you look at uh, financial accounting versus tax or gap or book versus tax, a permanent difference means that there is a difference in the tax law versus the financial accounting rules or vice versa where something is treated differently, but it never is going to change. It's never going to be adjusted in the future. So perfect example is municipal bond interest, which we have in this example, which for financial accounting purposes is always considered income, is always considered income, but for tax purposes, it's not considered income if it meets certain criteria. Usually if it just says municipal bond interest, we assume that it meets that. And that is an example of a permanent difference because that's never going to reverse or change over time. A temporary or timing difference means that there will be differences in one year, financial accounting versus tax for, uh, between the two, financial accounting income versus taxable income. But in total years, looking at total years for that specific item, it'll be the same. So perfect example is depreciation. Depreciation, financial accounting, we almost always use straight line. For tax purposes, we use it's called makers, modified accelerated cost recovery system depreciation, which usually is recovered faster than straight line, almost always double decline balance, but depends on the asset. So those are, and that's an example of a temporary or timing difference. And those are important to consider. Now, when we're going through this, remember, because we're given book income, the income statement, revenue minus expenses, and that gives us net income or net loss, net income, net loss. Now here we're told the net income is $1,200,000. That is our book income. That is our book income. We don't know the total revenue number. We don't know the total expense number either. But we're going to be given some information that can help us understand what's going into certain items. So first, or the next thing is we're given that book income includes $380,000 of income tax expense. Now, on the financial statements, on the income statement, this expense includes $380,000. That means that in getting the $1,200,000, we subtracted away $380,000 of income tax expense, of income tax expense. So for financial accounting purposes, you subtract that away and gain income, net income. But for tax purposes, you are not allowed to subtract away federal income tax expense. You are not allowed to do that. And that means that's a that we're going to have to add that back. So that's item two. We add back the $380,000 of federal income tax expense to our book income because, again, we're getting the taxable income. So we're adding it back. So we add that back, and that equals $380,000. And eighty thousand dollars. Now, this is an example of a permanent difference because it's not going to change in the future. It's not like oh, the three hundred eighty thousand dollars is going to be subtracted in the future and in taking book income to taxable income another year. No, this is the only time that we treat this this year. We are going to add it back to get our taxable income because you can't subtract it in determining your taxable income. Okay, the next item: ten thousand dollars of municipal bond interest income. So this is number three. The idea here is that this, for financial accounting purposes, this $10,000 is 
of municipal bond interest income. I'll just call it muni bond interest. It went into the income line to get the $1,200,000 of book income. It went into that line of book income or went into the revenue line to get the um, book income or net income of $1.2 million. For tax purposes, the rule is that municipal bond interest is excluded from gross income. It's excluded. So the $1.2 million that we're starting with, that includes $10,000 that should not be included for tax purposes. So we're going to subtract away the muni bond interest of $10,000. We're going to subtract that away, the municipal bond interest of $10,000, that is a permanent difference. That is a permanent difference. That's another example of a permanent difference. A permanent dif difference. So we're just going flying right through these things. Okay. And the last item is $150,000 of business meals expense. So that's number four. And by the way, we finished number three. Okay. Business meals. So business meals, put number four here. Business meals expense is going to be a deduction on the income statement as an expense. So business meals expense. And specifically, there's $150,000, which went into the expense line, the expense total. So business, meals, expense, all $150,000 was allowed as, as a reduction, which went into expenses to reduce um, revenue to get net income. For tax purposes, the rule for business meals, for business meals expense, it really depends on the year. It depends on what specific item the business meals expense are, there's a general rule that applies and there's like special rule, special instances. The general rule is that business meals expense, 50% is deductible for tax purposes. And you might be wondering, huh, why is that? The The rationale is because um, when it comes to the tax law, personal, expended, ex personal expenses, you're not allowed to deduct. That's a general rule. Can't take it as a deduction. And the idea is that personally people have to eat. Even if you're an employee or whatnot, there's a there's a, 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 a aspect of eating that's personal and you can't deduct that normally. However, a portion of that might be discussing business or uh, you know conducing or doing business, right? You're you're um, in a business meeting while you're eating and you're talking about business. So basically, Congress, IRS, they decided to like kind of just split it, go right in the middle, and generally, 50% of business meals expenses are deductible. Are deductible. Again, it's possible to get 100% deductible of business meals expense, depending on the year and depending on the specific item. 80%, there's differences in numbers. There's some items where you can't deduct anything at all. So it really depends. But the general rule is 50%. And because we're not told anything else, we're going to apply the general rule of 50% deductible. So we were able to take the full $150,000 on the financial statement, which, which is the case. If we're only allowed to take 50%, we're going to take one half of that or 50%. So we're going to take the $150,000 from the book, the book, the book expense. We're going to multiply that by 50% and we're going to get $75,000. Now $75,000 is what you're going to, what, what should be recorded, what should be recorded. Okay. What should be recorded. And another way to think about this is 75,000 is the amount you're allowed for tax purposes the amount you're allowed for tax purposes. So we could actually Add back, if you want, the um, business meals, the business meals expense on the books, on the books. We can add it back to show this adjustment. We can add it back for $150,000. You're saying, wait, what are you doing? Because I'm about to subtract away the portion we are allowed. And then subtract the business meals expense for tax for tax. And that is, a, that is the $75,000. So I'm showing you, we're adding back the portion of book because we're taking book income and getting tax. And the idea is that business meals expense, there is an adjustment. So we start by adding it back and then we subtract away what should be taken for tax purposes. And that's exactly what we did. We took the $150,000 and added back for, that was from the books, $150,000. And then we subtracted away the portion that we calculated, right? The 150,000 book amount times 50% gives us 75,000. That's the amount we're allowed for, allowed for tax purposes. Okay. So those are all our adjustments because we just finished number four. So again, only 75,000 or 50% 50, 50 of the business meals expense can be deducted on tax, uh, tax return to get taxable income. So we've just gone through, we've calculated everything. This is going to give us 1,600,000 
and $45,000 of taxable income. And that is our last step, step five in this question. So number five is to calculate taxable income and we get $1,645,000. So let's just go through quickly to review. Step one, start with book income. And we did that. We got $1.2 million. That's this amount up here. Boom. Step one, get our book income. And again, what you're doing here is you're starting with book income and you're adjusting certain items to get taxable income. Step two, we're going in order of how it's presented the problem. Book income includes $380,000 of income tax expense. That's allowed for book purposes, but not tax purposes. So we add it back. It's an expense that we add back. So that $380,000, we added that back. That was step two. Boom. Step three, we're told municipal bond interest. That's included in the revenue in getting net income, but it's not included for tax purposes. That's $10,000, and we subtracted that away because it's not included for tax purposes, so we subtract it away. Next, we are going to adjust the amount of meals expense that are allowed. For book purposes, we took $150,000, the full amount, but for tax purposes, you only take 50% of that. So what we did was we added back the full $150,000 and then we subtracted away the portion you're allowed to take for tax purposes. And then that gave us a total taxable income in the end of $1,645,000.